Brothers and sisters, I wish to address four of the main entrances that shaitan comes into the heart of a person and he is keen and he is eager to come into the heart of a Muslim because this is the control room. And if he is inside of the control room, he has free reign to do with you as he wishes. And therefore we cannot truly protect ourselves from shaitan only after our study of today and its likes to know and to be acquainted with the entrances of shaitan so that we may block them. Fear to scare a Muslim to whisper in his or her ears the voice of doom as they put it. How does he do that? Ponder over these four examples, my respected brothers and sisters, and I hope the matter will become clear. Number one, Shaitan will scare a Muslim from those who support him and work for his cause. What does that mean? Shaitan will come to one of us and say, have you not noticed how long your beard is becoming these days? He will say to one of our sisters, have you not noticed how noticeable it is that you're a Muslim from your appearance? Do you want to get hit in the street? Do you want to get spat at and sworn at? I suggest you rethink your beard. I suggest you rethink your dress code. He makes you fear those who work for him. A father may see that his son is now adopting a lot of Islamic practice. And his visit to the masjid is now becoming frequent. Wallahi alhamd. And his memorization of the Quran is going up. And his punctuality for salah is improving. But then he begins to advise his son, saying to him, Oh, my son, be careful. Just in case you bring about attention that we do not need for ourselves as a family. Fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alaysa Allah bi kafin abdah. Is Allah not sufficient for his slave? And they threaten you with that which is lesser than Allah. Allah says, this is the devil who makes you fear his supporters. But don't be afraid of them. Be afraid of me. If you are true believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And Allah says, قُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكَّلُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ Say, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is enough for me. In him we should put our trust. This is the first avenue of fear when shaitan makes you fear those who support him and work for his cause. He says they are big. They outnumber you. You are a strange. You are gharib. You are an outsider. Fear them and drop and go reverse in any part of your Islamic, Islamic appearance or activity. The second way that shaitan puts fear in the hearts of one of us brothers and sisters is via faqr, poverty, poverty. He will say, will you close your shop? He will say that it is alcohol that brings the majority of your income. If you remove alcohol, the Tesco next door will swallow you up. He will say to one of us, well, how dare you remove nicotine from your store? Who will feed the children? Who will feed your wife and your family and children? He makes them fear poverty. Allah says. Shaitan warns you. He threatens you with poverty. This is the promise of Shaitan. What is the promise of Ar-Rahman? He says, Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will provide for him a way out of every problem. And He will provide for you from areas where you least expected. And whoever puts his trust in Allah, then Allah will be enough for them. This is the promise of Shaitan. And you have the promise of Ar Rahman, and it is us up to us to choose which of the two promises we wish to we wish to work with. So we said the first avenue of fear was to make you scared of his followers and those who work for him. And the second avenue of fear is poverty, poverty, the dinar and the dirham, the pound and the dollar. The third avenue of fear, before closing with the fourth, is when Shaitan comes and he scares you of the prospect. Listen to this, especially my younger brothers and sisters. He scares you of the prospect of never being able to recover 
after leaving a certain habit or craving aside. What does that mean? A dear brother of ours who is in a relationship that's outside the pale of marriage. And he now has fallen into a massive state of regret because his heart is shackled and chained. And he wishes to move away from her because he knows marriage is not an option. But Shaitan says, wait, where are you going? If you ever leave her, you will be miserable. She is your happiness. You only she can make you joyous and happy in life. Where are you going? So he becomes scared to leave because he says, I will never recover. And Shaitan says to him, if you ever leave her, if you rather ever dare thinking about putting her aside, it's going to be a never ending roller coaster of misery for you till the day you meet Allah. Nobody in this world will make you happy, he says, except her. So he closes that door of repentance, fear. This, my brothers and sisters, applies to every other sin and craving that one of us may be, may be victim to, whether it is alcohol or the dealing with the interest, or whether it is a haram relationship, or whether it is any other addiction like nicotine or it's like, shaitan says, you will never ever be able, able to recover. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never put a Muslim in a situation where the haram is the only option. Allah Almighty is far kinder than that. Ahmed narrates in his Muslim on the authority of Abi Dahma and Abi Qatada that they said, Atayna ala rajulin min ahli al-badiyati faqulna hal sami'ta rasool Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yadkuru shay'a. He says, me and Abi Qatada, we went in the desert once and we met a man in the Bedouin desert and we said to him, did you ever hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say anything? He said, yes. I heard him say the following, إِنَّكَ لَمْ تَدَعَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ تَبْتَغِ بِهِ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أَبْدَلَكَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مَا هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْهِ I heard him once say that if you ever leave anything for the sake of Allah Almighty, it is incumbent upon Allah to give you something that is better. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, brother, therefore, my sister, let your resistance of that whispering be great. And let your suspect in Allah Almighty be even greater. And know very well that the well-being that you want for yourself, Allah wants it for you more than you want it for yourself. But put your trust in Him and do not surrender to the whispering of shaitan and know that the khair will come your way and you will recover even if it is a temporary moment of bitterness having to cut that relationship. But you will recover like everybody else who has fallen into the sin has recovered as well. This is the third entry of shaitan, fear that you will never recover after leaving a sin. And the fourth and final one, brothers and sisters, is fear fear of losing a friend or losing a family member if I follow the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fearing losing the friendship of family if I embrace the religion of Islam or become a follower of the sunnah of the messenger alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Furqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُونُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّقَدْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا Allah says on the day of judgment there will be a man or there will be people who will be biting at their hand in regret saying if only I had not taken so and so as a friend Oh woe to me he will say if only I followed a path with the messenger so and so has misguided me from the straight path of Allah and shaitan is truly a deserter of man these verses, brothers and sisters, were revealed as Imam Al-Qurtubi narrates in his tafsir on the authority of As-Suhayli. That there was a man by the name of Uqbah ibn Abi Mu'ayt. He had a friend called Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And in other narrations, his brother, Ubayy ibn Khalaf. And Uqbah invited people to eat food at his house. And he invited Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but the messenger said, I will not come to your food only if you embrace the religion of Islam. So he embraced the religion of Islam. Uqba, he embraced the religion of Islam. And then they ate. And then his friend, his friend Umayyah said to him, how dare you invite him? 
What made you invite him? He said to him, I found it very rude that I invite the Arabs to eat at my house and I don't invite Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, no, I am not going to be pleased with you only if you go to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Muhammad and you spit in his face. So he went and he listened to his friend. He doesn't want to lose his friendship. So he lost his hat hereafter instead. And he spat in the face of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Almighty revealed these verses from the Quran saying on the day of judgment, he will be biting his hand out of regret, saying, I wish I took a path with the Messenger. Ya Waylata, if only I had not taken so and so as my friend, he turned me from the straight path, from guidance, the remembrance after it came to me. But look at how the verses are concluded. Allah is speaking about Uqbah and Umayyah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But look at how the verses are concluded. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولَهَ And the devil is always a deserter of man when he needs him the most. What does the shaytan have to do with anything? He's the root cause of the problem. He is the one who whispers fear in our ears saying, if you leave your ways, then your friends will leave you. Your family will disown you. Look at how Uqba lost his hereafter. Because he didn't want to lose his friend. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I conclude and I say that don't give people more attention than they deserve. Because we know on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, we're going to stand in front of Allah alone. وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدًا Everybody will stand in front of Allah as an individual. <coughs> and Allah says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ On the day of judgment, man will be running away from his brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And he will run away from his mother and father. And he will run away from his wife. And he will run away from his children. Why? On that day, everybody will have an affair to occupy them, worried about their judgment. If that is going to be the end, we will be foes, enemies of one another. If we weren't friends for the sake of Allah, if that is the end, why should I give a person more importance than he actually deserves in my life? Why should I choose what direction I make in the hereafter because of a person who will disown me on the day of judgment? Where is our rationale, my brothers and sisters? Where are our priorities? Therefore, Ikhwan and Akhawat, these are some of the entries of Shaytan that he comes into me and he comes into other people. However, the Muslim, after recognizing who his enemy is, studying some of these techniques, and always keeping on God till the day he meets Allah, you are then able to apply the verse where Allah says, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa, indeed the plotting of the devil is in fact very weak. Weak only on a person who is able to prepare for the combat with shaitan and is aware of his various entrances.